Okay, we're gonna talk about wheel gauges. Mr. Wolf's gonna show us. Uh, this is the first gauge that I'll illustrate. It's, we call it the thin flange gauge. And it's, it's got two notches here. Okay. The uh, 7 8 inch notch is for federal requirements, uh, FRA uh, specification. 15 16 is the AAR regulation. Okay. And the idea is that... I we, just learned something new I did not know. Okay, well, the idea that we use 15 16 so we'll catch a wheel before it hits the federal limit and we'll never worry about a federal violation that awesome. way. Awesome. So this is the one that we use 15 16 Okay. Now the way it works is it's uh, take this 15 16 and put it over the wheel flange and here we see if you hold this part parallel to the axle and if it touches out here where my finger is when it's over the flange it's condemnable but mm -hmm. this one is a a good flange it's not even close but this is how you would find a thin flange wheel Okay, and that's using the 15 16 notch. Now, you might say, why is a thin flange wheel a concern? Well, if this wheel flange gets too thin, it may pick a switch point, it may climb a point, and as it thins out, it also is more prone to climb a switch point as well, perhaps. So, that's the reason we don't want thin flange wheels. Also, as wheels get thinner on the flange, it increases your effective gauge. Right. It widens the gauge out. Correct. So, 15 16 is the maximum. The wheel flange starts at about an inch and a half down here at the throat when it's new. Okay. Down in this area, about an inch and a half when it's new. This is probably still over an inch a little bit. Wonderful. Now, okay. Ready to keep going? Yes, sir. Okay. You're in charge. For second. The second measurement we take is called for vertical flange. Vertical flange. And vertical flange, we use a one inch notch, this little notch right there. Um, right there, that notch is one inch above the base of the gauge. Okay. And so what you do, you put it in the flange here on the tread area. And if you seat it on the flange and it touches at this notch, it's very close here but not, not quite all the way. But that would be what's called a vertical flange wheel. Mm -hmm. And a vertical flange wheel is also one that may be prone to pick a switch point or to split a switch over. All right. Okay. So that's dealing with the flange. Now, we also can measure what is called a high flange wheel. And that's the height of the flange cannot be more than an inch and a half above the tread area here. Okay, and that would that could occur because this tread wears down. Correct. Wow, I got something right. Yep. <laughs> there you go. So we have the AR uh, standard wheel gauge. You put it on the back rim of the wheel here, and how that goes. You make sure it's seated back here, and if you touch it here in the what we call the tape line of the wheel and there's a little space there you are still got room to go now if it were to touch here uh -huh. and not on the tread then it'd be a condemnable right. high flange wheel tread. would be wore too much. Tread would be wore down too much. Now, why is that important? Well, if the flange sticks up higher than an inch and a half, as you know, Dave, the minimum depth of your frog castings is an inch and a half. You gotta maintain that at all times in your switch frogs. So if this gets higher than an inch and a half, it's gonna contact the bottom of your frogs. Right. That's gonna cause impact damage. As it goes through the switch frogs, it's going to lift the wheel tread up off the wing rail and none of that is good. Right. And also it can hit joint bars. Joint bars. And impact Absolutely. joint bars, crack joint bars. So I've had that happen. Okay. Well, I flange wheel. A lot of joint bars have a little uh, 
scratch mark right in the center of them. Right, there you go. Now, we have another version of the standard wheel gauge. It's called the finger gauge right here. Okay. And it's the same shape, but it has this movable finger on it that allows us to measure flange width and flange height. I'll show you how that works. This is really cool stuff. Yeah, so you put this on the wheel. All right. Like we did before. And we come in with the finger right down see here. See that or not? See this movable finger? We bring it into the flange. And then there's a, a little scale on here that you can convert this to sixteenths of an inch flange wear. All right. Now mechanical people use this gauge to judge what when they should turn a wheel and how many sixteenths of an inch to turn off the wheel on the lathe. Okay. And then the other use of it is to measure flange height. To put it on the wheel like that, and we bring this finger down again till it touches, and then we have a second measurement gauge here for flange height. Nice. Okay. Now. This is what we call in the railroad industry a go no go gauge. Okay. This is more of a measurement gauge, more precise in sixteenths of an inch. All right. So so this will measure flange height and flange width or thickness to the sixteenth of an inch. Now this is really cool you, stuff. You can also use this uh to check what's called rim thickness by placing this on here and on the outside rim and then you measure to the bottom of your rim down here and that's an indication in sixteenths of an inch of how thick the rim of the wheel is. Okay. And there's condemning limits for that also. I think it's around seven eighths perhaps. I'd have to check my book. And a final measurement that and this is an interesting one. For many years, we didn't really have a good way to measure hollow tread wheels. And Now, what do you mean by hollow tread wheels? It's where this part of the wheel gets dished out from okay. running on the rail. On the time. All right. Because the wheel and rail contact in this area right here and that tends to dish out mm -hmm. the wheel tread. Now, what does that cause? Well, it causes a lack of steering and curvature. When the wheels get hollow worn, they don't have that one in 20 taper like a new wheel has. And so when they enter a curve, instead of steering themselves around the curve, they sit there and squat and try to go straight, basically. And that's not good because that's what causes the flanges to wear. So. Wasn't a big problem with 70 ton cars or maybe even 100 ton cars, but as we introduced the 286,000 pound cars in the 1990s and the 315,000 pound cars, uh, the vertical forces started to increase quite a bit on the wheel tread interface and we started seeing more hollow wear. Mm -hmm. And these wheels were showing up in derailments. When I'd go out to a derailment and we find the culprit wheels, oftentimes they were hollow worn and were not steering. And that causes the track gauge to spread open and wheels to drop in or the rail to roll over. So we started talking in the industry and in various committees about it'd be good to have a hollow standard. And uh, I had worked with some iron ore railways around the world and we found that when you started truing wheels around two to three millimeters of hollow wear, the performance improved and the wheel life nearly doubled by doing that, by keeping that taper on the wheel. And so finally, the AR in the early 2000s came out with a hollow wear standard, which currently is four millimeters uh, of hollow wear. <laughs> and they also came out with a gauge to measure it. Now this is a uh, very interesting gauge. And I've I never think, seen anyone like that. Yeah, it has a, it has a movable slider here that can go back and forth like this, and then it has a lever that can go up and down, and you read the millimeters of tread hollow over here on this graduated scale. All right. Now here's a crazy thing, for me, every measurement on this freight car 
in AAR and federal standards is in sixteenths, thirty seconds, eighths of an inch. And the AR comes out with a hollow standard in millimeters. Which it's the only metric measurement I know for a railway freight car. Okay. So a bit of trivia for you. I'll tell you, this is fascinating stuff. Yeah. You put this part of the gauge against the rim of the wheel right here. Notice it has this cutout right there. That cutout is to accommodate any metal flow that sometimes comes over the edge of the wheel when right. the wheel gets really worn. This wheel is good. It's got a clean edge on it, so it's not an issue. So you put the gauge on it, and then you hold it, and you slide this back and forth and push the lever down until you find the maximum amount of tread, uh, tread hollow. And I'd say right in here, it's right about there. So I'll push this over a bit. We'll push this lever down. Got it. And then we'll measure the tread hollow here at about 2.5 millimeters, right there. All right. Now four is the condemning limit, so. We're in pretty decent shape. You're in good shape on this wheel. Great. So that wheel, should still provide decent steering in your curves, and you have a lot of sharp curves on the Cumberland yes, we do. Coal Railway here, so you want to keep these wheels tuned up the best the best you can. So those are the basic wheel measurements. We got flange thickness, vertical flange. We have um, high flange, no more than an inch and a half. We have rim thickness here to see how much wear is left in the wheel. And then we have the tread hollow. And with those four or five measurements, you'll keep your wheel in safe operating limits. You'll That's be safe not only for AAR standards, but also the Federal Railway uh, regulations as well. And we like to keep trains safe here. Everybody likes to keep the wheels safe. That's yes, sir. No derailments. Very important stuff, isn't it? That's right. All right, wonderful. Okay. So that's it for wheels. Let's go look at some trucks. Okay. Oh, wait. I got a bonus for you. A bonus. Let's have yes, it. I want to show you a new device. Um, a couple of devices came out in the late 90s, early 2000s. You got to get out of that. To give more precise measurement to wheels. Uh, I'm talking like thousandths of an inch across the profile of the wheel. Mm -hmm. And there's two basic devices. One is called a mini prof out of Denmark that uses a mechanical arm to trace the wheel. And then we also have developed lasers that can scan the, the uh, profile of the wheel tread and capture it to a few thousandths of an inch accuracy. That's amazing stuff. So I'm going to show you how the laser works. We're not going to set it all up today, but I'll just show you the technology that we have. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, this is Mr. Wolf's book, The Complete Field Guide to Modern Derailment Investigation. It's over 430 pages of uh, railroad information on all kinds of stuff. Uh, this is a, an, over a thousand different uh, photos. So I highly recommend this for all railroaders and for all train fans. It's uh, just chock full of information. There's a link in this video's description uh, to go to Mr. Wolf's website where you can order your copy of this book.